A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Some people are concerned that I've lost mine, but not to worry, I haven't lost it. I just sold it for a great price on eBay. Yeah, I know that joke is a little dated. How many people even go shopping via eBay anymore? Anyway, joking aside, in your head and in mine, we each come equipped with a brain, as debatable as that may sometimes be. And as part of the whole human package, here is usually the physical location we give to our sentient selves and the ability to have thoughts. So today, here are some thoughts on thoughts. This word sometimes being translated from the Greek logismi. This guy from the late 4th century called Evagoras the Solitary recognized in his text on discrimination that there are three types of thoughts, which he calls angelic, human, and demonic. In today's pop culture, we might call them positive, neutral, and negative thoughts. He also said, quote, sometimes thoughts are cut off and sometimes they do the cutting off. Evil thoughts cut off good thoughts and in turn are cut off by good thoughts, end quote. Father Roman Braga used to say that the mind is like a mill that grinds constantly. St. Paisios would remark that thoughts are like airplanes flying in the air. And as Martin Luther once paraphrased a Chinese proverb, you cannot keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Elder Paisios continues that you can create airports inside your head and permit the airplane to land. And Father Roman finished by saying, you need to feed something to it. Otherwise, the devil brings other things for the mind to grind. Quick aside, I'm not saying quote-unquote anymore, so if you're curious, check out the closed captions or the video description below. I don't know about you, but most of the time, I'm too busy wrapped up in the rat race of life that, much like the chocolate skit from I Love Lucy, I'm just taking in any and all thoughts that hit me, not bothering even to consider what kind of thoughts they actually are. Just thinking about the thousands upon thousands of thoughts that pass through our head in a single day is a bit much for me. That's why, even though I don't do it enough, it really is helpful to take those quiet moments of silence. To take the time for those mindfulness and meditation buzzwords. And without any judgment, let those thoughts cross by, like items floating down a river or clouds drifting in the sky. And from my own experience, it does help to meditate. In my own practice, I usually do it with my prayer robe and the Jesus prayer, focusing on that one angelic thought to let all other thoughts pass by. When angelic thoughts aren't working, there's always human ones to cut off any demonic persistence. So some tools that might be useful include exercising, sleeping and eating well, talking and just being with other people, as well as putting pen to paper to sort it all out. When I'm really stuck in my head, one of my favorite grounding techniques uh, that sometimes helps is 54321. Again, neutral thoughts that cut off negative ones. Wherever I am, I stop and notice five things I can see, four I can touch, three I can hear, two things I can taste, and one thing I can smell. I like ending with smell because normally it forces me to take a nice deep breath, which might help call to mind my prayer robe and pray some knots. We are not our thoughts, like a garden is not a seed, but we can interact with that seed, consent to nurture it and water it, which follows with roots and a plant appearing above ground. Over time, that small thought can grow into a great mammoth of a tree. Every time we interact and think on a thought, a connection is made between one neuron to another in our brain. The more we think a specific thought, the stronger that neural pathway becomes until it can grow into a full-fledged belief. Having positive and neutral beliefs is great, but the difficulty comes in when you find yourself in a negative forest. Since it took time to get that far, it'll take time to uproot them. But no matter how big, things can get better. Just don't try to take it on all alone. Start with the fake it till you'll make it physical actions and motions, like sleeping and eating right, going for a walk and being with others. Then combine these with working on those mental exercises and being watchful of other thoughts in reflective vigilance, writing stuff down, mindfulness, and getting professional help if needed. This is summarized well in the Native American legend known as Two Wolves, which you've probably heard before. 
An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He has anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continues, The other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, sincerity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person, too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, Which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, The one you feed. There are things we cannot control, yet there are always things we can choose. Life is filled with peaks and valleys, highs and lows. We have pockets of stillness offered to us. Moments to just breathe and accept with joy and gratitude the life that is given. There are millions of thoughts constantly trying to grab our attention. We're not robots, so we'll never get it completely right. And that's okay. I'm Anastasia, it's nice to see you, and welcome to the human race. Hey friends, I hope this finds you well. I realized after watching the video of the draw that I was moving my paper too much, so I'm not sure if you actually got to see the whole final product. So, ta-da! Aren't you so very proud of me? So amazing, yes. Um, I also just wanted to show um, some of the books that helped inspire um, this uh, bird's eye view. Um, I'll put that one. Yeah, like that. That's probably better. Uh, so some of these books, the Philokalia was Evagoras, um, and some other stuff. This is just like food for thought. Um, and then for the wolf drawing, because that was fun. Uh, that was from my book that <laughs> I got for a birthday and a bag that I got when I bought some stuff from the Wolf Sanctuary a long, a long time ago, so that's what that is from. Um, and then the last quick thing I just want to mention, uh, this is the book that I'm currently reading right now. I'm finishing up um, C.S. Lewis's uh, Space Trilogy, so last one. Um, I've been enjoying that so far. And then maybe after that I might try this book uh, by Dr. Nicole. Um, Maybe, I don't know, it'll be good. But anyways, this was mainly an extra add-in so that you could see the whole thing because paper moves. Next time maybe I'll put um, some tape where the frame ends so I won't do that. Any further resources or kind of links or whatever that I can think of, I'll put down in the description. Uh, so you're welcome to look down there, um, whether it's uh, book titles or whatever or podcasts or articles that relate to this, if I'm good. Aha! Okay, don't wanna make this go too long, so I'll see you later. Bye!